In this episode, I'll show you how to edit time-lapse videos in After Effects. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the best camera store hands down in the entire world. Check them out at Adorama.com. Well, last week, in last week's Exploring Photography episode, I showed you how to shoot stills for time-lapse video, and this week we're gonna learn how to take those stills and edit them in After Effects. Now, the question is, why After Effects? There are all kinds of different applications that you can use to create time-lapse videos. Well, many of those have already been covered on, uh, on Adorama TV, and so you can look at those. You can check out the Adorama Learning Center. So we're gonna focus specifically on After Effects because there are a lot of really cool things you can do and I'm gonna keep it really simple so if you don't know anything about After Effects that's okay you can dive right in and follow right along before we do that though I want to remind you that Adorama has some awesome photo contests you can click the link it's absolutely free and the good news is you can win some awesome prizes so enter today All right, we've got a ton to cover today. So without further ado, let's hop into After Effects and learn how to edit time-lapse videos. Well, before we jump into After Effects, we first need to prepare our images for import into After Effects. And so I have a Lightroom catalog that has all the images that I shot for our time-lapse video. And what I've done here is I've just uh, divided these up into some collections based on the shoot. So roundabout one, roundabout two, roundabout three. So these are just uh, me shooting at this little roundabout in different locations. I can scroll through here really fast and you can see what that looks like. We're going to work with the sunrise images that I shot, and you can see if I scroll through here that the sun's going to pop up eventually. Uh, what uh, we need to do, though, is we need to correct the aspect ratio and any little things uh, that uh, need to be fixed, like if these images are uh, not level or need some other adjustments to them. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to this very first image in the sequence, and I will go to the develop module by hitting D for develop. And then I want to uh, show you what I did with the crop. So if I go into the crop tool, you can see that I have cropped this and taken out a little bit of the bottom and a little bit of the top. Specifically, I've cropped this to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now, by default, my camera shoots a uh, 4 by 6 aspect ratio, which we don't want. We want a widescreen video, which is 16 by 9. So I've done that. I've cropped this. And also, I want to make sure that these pictures are all straight. So I'm going to draw a little line across here using my angle tool here to make sure everything is straight. That looks good. So I will close that. Now what I want to do is I want to apply that exact same crop and angle correction to all of my images so they don't jump around, so they're exactly the same. So I'll go back to the library module. I have the very first image selected. I will go to the very end of this sequence, hit shift and click that so they're all selected. And then I'm just going to say sync settings and I'm going to make sure I've selected all because I want them all to be exactly the same and I'll click synchronize. All right, so now every single image in this uh, sequence is going to be cropped at 16 by 9 at the exact same place and leveled. So from the first to the last, these are all going to look exactly the same. All right, now we need to get these to a folder so that we can import them into After Effects. We want to make sure they're the right file size. Now we're uh, editing in HD. 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080. So what we will do here is we will go to File, Export, and then we're going to export this to a specific location. So I'm going to say Sunrise 16 by 9, so I know uh, where exactly that is on my hard drive. Now the other thing that you might want to do is to rename your files because After Effects is going to expect these to be named sequentially. So image one, image two, image three, um, so it needs to look and see those. So if your camera doesn't sequentially number your images, you might want to rename those. Mine are sequentially numbered, so I don't have to rename the files, but if you need to, that's where you do it. All right, we're going to uh, export these as a JPEG image. I'm going to leave the quality around 80. That's fine for what we need to do. You might want to increase that or decrease that based on your settings, but 80 is a good place. We also want to edit this in an RGB color space. So you can use a smaller color space, sRGB. I want to use Adobe RGB for my export. 
And then I'm going to resize these images so they're 1920 by 1080, which is a uh, high definition 1080p image size. And so I'll leave that at a resolution of 240. I'm going to sharpen these for screen because it makes them look a little bit better. And then uh, I'll uh, show these in Finder when we're done. So I'm going to click Export. And then with the power of video editing, I'll show you the results here in a second. Well, our export is finished in real time. That took quite a while. So you might want to grab a cup of coffee because you can't just edit out the time it takes to export those images. Well, we have everything set. I can preview these. You can see they're in 16 by 9 aspect ratio and they are in order of sequence. So we're all set to go. So we'll zip over to After Effects. The first thing we want to do is create a new composition. If you're brand new to After Effects, just do exactly what I'm going to show you here. You'll be just fine. So I'm going to create a new composition. And I'm going to name this composition Sunrise. You don't have to, but I like to keep it nice and friendly. And then the preset that we want to use needs to match the output of the video we're editing. Well, we know we're editing a 1080p high definition file, so I can choose HDTV 1080 2997, which is the frame rate. Now, notice that the width and the height of our, uh, our composition, it matches exactly the width and our height of the export that we just did. All right, so that's all set up. We can say OK. Now, the next thing we need to do is import all those files, and this is where it gets to be really easy. I'll just go to File, Import, and I know you would think that we'd say import multiple files, but we actually just click File, Import, File, and I'll show you why. So we'll click that, and then we're going to navigate to that folder that I created, which was the Sunrise folder. So we're in time lapse here. So here's that Sunrise 16 by 9 folder. What I want to do is I want to uh, look at the very first image in that sequence, which is image 0313, and they all go up from there. Now down here, this is very important. Uh, we're importing our JPEG format. It's important that you have JPEG sequence selected. Now, the nice thing is you can do this with TIFF files. You can even do this with RAW files, and the uh, Adobe Camera RAW converter will appear. I like to do all my conversions before. It saves a lot of render time. Now, if you have gaps in your image numbering, so maybe you have 321, 323, and 322 is missing, you can click Force Alphabetical Order and that will close those gaps. Without that, if there's a gap, you're going to get a blank, uh, just a black frame and a warning that says, hey, you've got some, some gaps in your files. So uh, we don't have any gaps, so I don't have to check that. All right, when I click open, this is all going to come in as one uh, sequence of images. And so here it is. It just comes in as one sequence. It's called image 0313 to 1250. So that's all those images. It comes in just like uh, footage, like file footage that you'd have from a video. Now what we can do then is we can just take this and we can drop it down here into our sequence. And there you have it. We just have to render this and it's done. Now, for those of you who want to know a little bit more about the advanced settings, for example, setting how many frames per second that you use, you can change that by right clicking and you can say uh, interpret footage, main, and here's where you can change the frame rate. So by default, it's 30 frames per second, which matches our composition setting. But what if you wanted to slow things down or speed things up? You can change that here and say, hey, I only want two frames per second or two images per second, or I want 60 per second. It doesn't matter. You can change that there. Um, I'm going to cancel that. Another thing you can do to change how fast or how slow something goes is you can right click on your image sequence. You can go to time, and then you can go to time stretch. Now, time stretch lets you slow things down or speed things up. And so with my sunrise sequence, I shot too many images, so it takes too long for the sun to come up. And so what I can do here is I can set this stretch factor from 100 down to 50. In other words, take half as much time, which makes things go faster. So take 50% of the time, that is making it go twice as fast, and I can say OK. And so that's the joy of uh, editing in After Effects, is you can do all of those different time effects very, very easily. Once that's all done, if you're new to After Effects, if you hit the spacebar to play, it's really not going to play in real time here. It has to render 
And so you need to render that. That's where the complicated stuff comes if you're new to After Effects. Let me walk you through it and I'll show you how to output an actual movie. So what we'll do here is we're now going to say File, Export. Now you'd want to normally save your, uh, your entire project, but we're going to take a risk and not do that. So I'm going to export this to the Adobe Media Encoder queue. Adobe Media Encoder gives you a lot more flexibility and choices than just the render queue. So I'm going to add this to the Adobe Media Encoder queue. And as soon as I do that, Adobe Media Encoder will actually open up. And uh, once it does, we have all these choices. So here it is. Now what we can do here on the left hand side, we can choose the type of file we want. Now I want an H.264 file because I want to put this on the web, but you can change that by clicking on it, it's going to connect to the Adobe Dynamic Link Server. You don't have to know what that is. But then you get all these other formats. You can do this as H.264 or MPEG-2 or 4 or QuickTime or PNG or TIFF or Targa or however you want to slice it, you can do that. If you don't know what any of those things are, just stick with H.264.